Hello, welcome to Engineer Simple. In this video, I'll introduce the concept of Y bus matrix. This is very a very important concept, uh, and it's really important to understand. So the Y bus can be used to solve complex problems such as power flow, short circuit, and short circuit basically you invert the the y bus to get the z bus you know in other words the z bus is equal to the inverse of the y bus matrix and also it can be used to in gic calculations except in gic obviously it only uses resistances So, in, in general, in order to understand any topic, you know, any complex topic, it's always really a good idea to start with uh, a simple model, and then from there you can kind of general, generalize it. So, in this example, to kind of introduce the concept of Y bus matrix, I'll start just with a three bus system you know so you see bus one bus two bus three and obviously i'm not showing generators uh transformers but uh because it, for the model really those components to the system are just uh impedances you know so but just for simplicity i'm just showing the buses so in it and i'm going to assume a pi model in other words I'm gonna on for each branch or each line I'm gonna place half of the shunt admittance on each end of the branch. And each branch obviously has a resistance, a reactance, see these are series elements, and a shunt admittance JB. And conductance is ignored. So the shunt admittance, so that in general you have Y is equal to G g plus j times b but obviously typically the conductance is, is ignored so branch one two basically that's the the line be between bus one and two as you see on this sketch to the right and it has an impedance one two which is uh, it has a resistance and also a reactance it has a shunt uh, admittance in this case half of that is i'm calling y1 and y2 so if you see between branch between bus one and bus two the series uh admittance obviously admittance in this case y12 is the inverse or one over z12 basically so so it has a series admittance or it has an admittance of one two and also the shunt admittance, half of it is I called Y1 and half of it I called Y2. In the branch one, three, the same thing, it has uh, admittance of y, uh, Y13 and the shunt admittances or the halves are Y prime one and Y3. I called it prime because branch one, two has Y1, just to make the differentiation basically. Branch two three, which is between bus two and three, so it has a admittance of y two three, and the shunt admittances are y prime two and y prime three. So now, in this case, so I'm going to show the proof how to, like, if you see the general formula or equation or general equations how to formulate the y bus you know where it came from but uh, for application purposes you can just use those two equations that i will show later but just for to so we understand where those equations came from let's go through a quick kind of proof so if i apply kcl so for instance i take Let's use a highlighter. So oops. 
Oops, I, I need to highlight. Okay. So if I use KCL around this node here, basically. So if you see I12, some of it will flow through the series impedance or admittance Y12, and some of it will flow through the shunt admittance uh, Y1. So the current true Y1 is V1, the voltage at bus 1, which is V1 times change the pin so that's what I'm doing here so basically that current flowing through y1 is v1 times y1 remember Ohm's law z or uh, z or sorry current is v over z if I use impedance or V times Y if I use admittance. So that's what I'm doing here basically. So that's this current here flowing through Y1. The current flowing through Y12 is the voltage V1 minus V2. That's what I'm doing here times Y12. So that's what I did here. So if I rearrange such that I have V1 and V2 isolated uh, that for purposes that I will show later. Then I do the same thing for I21. So the current here flowing from bus 2 basically going towards bus 1. Some of it will flow through Y2 and some of it will flow through Y12. So this current here is V2 times Y2. So that's what I have here. The other current, you know, basically the current flowing this way is V2 minus V1 times Y12. That's this current here. In Y21 is the same as Y12 because it's the same admittance. So if, you, if I rearrange such that I can isolate v1 and v2 i get this formula basically so if i do the same thing for i13 so here's current i13 basically it's the current flowing from bus 1 towards bus 3. some of it will flow this way and some of it will flow through y13 so if i do the same thing i get this formula then i isolate the v1 and v3 so i get this formula so if I do the same thing for all these currents, so all the cur all the currents, so I get all these equations here. Now I can go to a current injected into each bus. For instance, the current injected into bus one is this current here, which some of it is I12, the other portion is I13. So that's what I wrote here. Then I just substitute I12 with its uh, equation because I12 is here and here's its equation. Then I13, the same thing, I have the equation here. So I can just replace it with that. Then I just kind of rearrange such that I can isolate V1, V2 in v3 because at the end i want to put it in a matrix format and we'll see that later so i do the same thing for i2 i2 is the current injected into bus 2 so which is i21 plus i23 i21 plus i23 i have i21 here it's this current here and i23 is this current here so if i just replace them with the their equations and I rearrange such that I can isolate V1 and V2 and V3. So basically simple algebra. Then I uh, current injected into bus 3, which is I3. So this current here injected into bus 3. So think about this system, it's, it's a, a network system. It, it's connected to other things, you know. 
So I3 is I31, this current here, plus this current here, which is 32. So 31 plus I31 plus I32. I31 is this current here. So I just use its uh, equation. Then I32, which is this current here. I just use this current. Then I kind of rearrange some like simple algebra. I get V1 times this matrix, this uh, admittance, plus V2 times that admittance, plus V3 times this quantity here. So, in this uh, slide, basically, I just, uh, the, the equations I got in the previous slide are the same here, just so we can refer to them. So, if I write this in matrix form, so, you see, I have I1, I2, I3, that's what I did here, then, is equal to V1, V2, V3, and I have that across all of them. You see, it's it's the same pattern. So I can put them in a vector, basically V1, V2, V3. Then, if I take, for instance, I1 is equal to V1, V1 times this quantity here, which I put here, plus V2 times minus Y12, which is this quantity here, plus V3 times Y13. So you see, basically I just put those multipliers in a matrix format. So I do the same thing for I2 and I3, and I end up with this format. So this is basically, if I want to put in a general format, it's vector i, which represents all the currents you have. You know, I mean, in my case, I only have three buses. If I had 50 buses or 1,000 buses, I'm going to have 1,000 currents. So i is equal to vector v, how many voltages you have, times the y bus. So basically, this is the y bus matrix so if we look at this matrix here we will deduce that that it's in the format uh, of its diagonals diagonals basically these are the diagonals let me erase this just so So these are the diagonals element of this matrix. So those are the diagonals. So the diagonals, basically, if you notice, is equal to the sum of the admittances connected to bus K. So for instance, so for Y, 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 K, K. So, so this position here is Y or Y low, uh, uppercase one, one, because it's a row one, column one. So Y one, one. So it's all the admittances connected to bus one so bus one basically if i come here here's bus one what's connected to it i have y1 plus y12 so that's what i have here that's what i have there then it's also connected to this to bus three so i have y prime one which is here plus y13 so that's really so you can see that's what I did here. So for the diagonal, we add the shunt, the shunt admittance. So in this case, half of it. 
then for the off diagonal elements we it's minus the sum of all the admittances connected between bus k and bus n such that k is not equal to n let me first show the off diagonal so basically the off diagonal are the rest of the the elements so like these are not on the diagonal so these are So notice, if I take this position here, it's this is y2, 1, because if position 1, 2, so that's row or count 2, and it's uh, on the row 1. So y2, 1, so if I go to y2, 1, and notice y2, 1 is equal to y1, 2, because it's the same. I mean, so between bus 1 and 2, I only have y, 1 2 so I put y 1 2 but I added the minus sign to it so that's what I did here and I do the same thing for y sorry this is y 1 3 so between bus 1 and 3 so basically the only Admittance connected to it is y13, so that's what I put here. Looks like I, there's a missing negative sign, so it should have a negative sign here because it's minus the sum of all the admittances connected between bus 1 and 3. So basically, that's what you do, and that's how you can. Uh, to get the y bus matrix for any system with uh, k buses or n buses you know it doesn't matter thousand ten thousand a hundred fifty thousand buses it's the same basically so so these are the two equations you need to know to formulate the y bus matrix in 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 the previous slide slides I can I showed how I came up to those two equations. So this is the kind of the the little proof. But if you want to just apply it, you, you need to know these two equations. So in the previous slide I kind of showed the the kind of the proof how I arrived to those two equations. Now let's let's assume we didn't have that proof. And I have the system. How do I get the Y bus matrix? So, if I just remember these two, the diagonal elements are equal to the sum of the admittances connected to bus K. So for Y1, Y11, it's basically anything that's connected to bus 1. Y22, it's anything connected to bus 2. Y33 is anything connected to bus 3 and ykn such that k is not equal to n so basically all are the off diagonal elements so it's minus you have to add a negative sign it's minus the sum of all the admittances connected between bus k and bus n so let's apply that so these are the off diagonal so y12 it's if I go here, so basically I'm going to apply this equation. It's minus, so I have to stick this minus sign here. Minus, then the sum of all the admittances connected between bus 1 and 2. So 1, bus 1 here, bus 2 is here. The only thing that's connected to it is y12. So I, if I stick a minus sign, then y12. Let's assume there was another branch, you know, connected here, like another line. Basically, you would add, then you would do, you would put this minus here, say like bracket, then you would do plus, for instance, this is uh, y uh, 
I'm just going to call this y prime 1, 2 plus y prime 1, 2. So you would add that. And you would add as many as as many admittances as you have. So I just used it for three buses just so it's not clustered and it's easy to understand. But it's really you can apply it to any system. So the same thing. So y21 basically is equal to y12. So you apply the same cost. So y13, so you stick the minus sign, then you go to the system. What's connected between bus 1 and 3 is y13. So that's what I put here. So you do this, the same thing for all of them. For the off diagonal, so y11, I go to the correct equation, which is this here. It's the sum of all the admittances connected to bus K. In this case, the bus 1, 1 is, uh, uh, Y11 one one is all the admittances connected to bus 1, you sum them. Again, here's bus 1. So I go this way, I have Y21. Then I have Y1. Then I go to the other side, which is a branch connected between bus 1 and 3. I have Y1, 3, and I have Y prime 1. Then I go to Y2, 2. It's the sum of all the admittances connected to bus 2. Y3, 3. It's the sum of the admittances connected to bus 3. Then, again, I just put them in the matrix format so notice what y11 uh, 1, 1, 1 2 1 3 so big uh, if you the way to remember it so the first digit is kind of like the row number so this is row one so one you see stays the same then you just change the column so column one so basically this here one column two count three so one 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 two then you just go and you place the quantities basically in the matrix then you go here this is row two so it's two does not change you see it here then you just change the column so you do the same thing for the entire uh, entire system So now let's do a quick, uh, another quick example. So let's assume we have, let's assume we have a pi model. Then we have here's the impedance between branch one, two, and here's its uh, shunt ad uh, admittance. Then impedance between branch one and three, and here's the shunt admittance. So let's just do a quick sketch. So I have. Here's bus one. It has a series impedance, and here's bus two. And I know bus one is connected to bus three. So I can something like this. So I'm just using a little square rectangle for uh, admittance. So I know impedance between branch 1 and 2 is equal to this quantity here. Then I need to convert that uh, to admittance. So y12 is 1 over z12. Then it's 1 over 0 0.0085 plus j 0 0.1. So if I use my calculator or MATLAB or whatever you are comfortable with, here, here it is in rectangular form, and here it is in uh, polar form per unit. So then you do the same thing for impedance 1, 3. Here's the equivalent admittance. It's 1 over Z1, 3. So you calculate that. And I have JB1, 2. It's the shunt admittance between branch 1 and 2. Then I need half of that since I'm assuming uh, a pi model. So basically, I'm going to place half of it here 
and half of it here and I do the same thing for branch one three so that's so then and notice I just to avoid any confusion I should have mentioned that at the beginning so I used for the branch admittance I used lower case y because admittance is typically uh, we use y as a symbol so for the branch in, uh, admittance I use lower case y but for the uh, y bus ad, uh, admittance I'm using uppercase y so just to make that clear so I know from the two equations y, uh, y12 is equal to y21 because it's the same branch um, this is a off diagonal so I have to stick a minus sign then I need to put the admittance connected between bus 1 and 2 so if I go back here uh, here's uh, y12 and here's the admittance so that's what I'm doing here so I do the same thing for the admittance between bus 1 and 3 so off diagonal you always stick a, sign, a negative sign then you put the admittance connecting the admittance between the two buses since I don't have anything so from this little sketch I see that there is nothing connected between bus 2 and 3 that means that admittance is 0 so anytime nothing is connected between two buses the equivalent admittance is just zero now the, the diagonal i know the diagonal admittances is equal to the sum of all the admittances connected to to that bus so bus one it's uh, basically the admittance between bus one and two plus admittance between bus one and three plus half of the shunt admittance for the two branches so that's what i'm doing here basically so i do the same thing for y22 y33 and then i formulate the y bus so here's the since i only have three three buses that means i'm going to have a three by three matrix if you have n buses you're going to have n by n uh, y matrix so then I just basically put the numbers here. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'll show how to go from the Y bus to the Z bus, which is important for, especially for short circuits. And after that, I'll, I'll show you how to use the Z ba uh, matrix to calculate basically fault currents for in for any system with n buses you can calculate uh fault curves whether it's a three phase short circuit uh, fault or line to ground line to line line to line to line to ground basically if you use the z bus you can do that easily which which is not easy to do if you don't if you don't use the z matrix z bus matrix it will be very it's almost impossible to calculate uh, a f fault current for bus you know for say even for say a system with 10 buses it's it's very tough in and after that i'll do a video on how to use the y bus matrix for power flow and so on and so forth and probably in the future how to use it also for uh, GIC calculations. That's it for this video. Thank you and have a great day.